Hey, people. Good morning. You can do better than this. Good morning. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, first of all, it's my pleasure being here today. Uh, and I'm talking about stress testing. So I will walk around. Uh, I expect to bother anyone. <laughs> One billion and six million of dollars. One billion and six million of dollars. That is what Amazon would expand with one page slowdown. One second page slowdown. And actually, Amazon is not the only one that are concerned about it. There's a lot of other big companies that would suffer and would spend a lot of money and lost a lot of money with performance and page speed. Other one is Google. Google actually... Uh, made this research that if they increase their page, their, they decrease their page speed by 500 milliseconds, that would drop their, their traffic by 20%. 20% is a lot. And if we take a closer look at those numbers, like the relation between page abandonment increase and load speed, we're going to see good stuff, like the most important part about this graph here is the four second data. Now, only after four seconds, so four seconds would increase your abandoned page rate by 25%. And it's a huge number. It can make the difference between the success and the failure of a product. It can make the success between how many people do you can support and how many lives you can change with your product and with your application. And the thing is that the, the, the users are not like really, really freaking about speed and freaking about impatience. It's not about a generation thing. Actually, it's about neuroscience. There is a fun research that was made with some users. Uh, and, the, and the expectations are really high. Like 47 of the people that was consulted tell that expected to a page load to be fully functional in two seconds. And it's too much. And it, this is not the worst part. Like the worst part is that 75% of the same people 75% of the same people said that they would not return if this page took more than four seconds to load. And yeah, you should be worried about it. Because uh, our brain does not, operate, does not operate really well in short-term response and in short-term memory. Actually, our short-term memory can hold like anything for more than 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, you can literally say that you forgot your, what is in your short memory. So you must be really worried about it. You must be working about it. You must, you must be working about performance. And all this is related about performance. Performance is like, it doesn't matter if you are a developer. It doesn't matter if you are a team leader. It doesn't matter if you are a product owner or if you are just another stakeholder. Sometime in the life of your product, in the life of your application, you, you end up have to deal with some questions like, will your application meet the no function requirement? How will your application behave in that extreme circumstance like heavy traffic? So performance affects every one of us and everyone that works in web development in the industry. I am João Moura. I'm the founder and CEO of Gioco. Gioco is a SaaS gamification platform. And I'm here to talk to you about stress testing as a culture. The first thing that we have to ask ourselves here right now is how to increase the success rate of my application to meet the needs related to scale. This is the question here right now. Because the stress testing, performance testing, load testing, it's all related about scale. It's all related about being ready to handle extreme circumstances into your application. 
And to talk about scale, to talk about performance and test, I will go through four key points. It's four simple key points that will enable you to start to stress testing and to address stress testing as part of a culture of your application. But in order to talk about those four key points, I have to tell you guys a story. And to, to tell this story, I have to tell you from where I am. And I'm from Brazil. For those that doesn't know, this is the Brazil's flag. And this is exactly where I live. So I came all the way down to, to be with you and to share with you this experience. And everybody, and everybody that, that asks me when I tell them I'm from Brazil, and I have been in conference all around the world, and every time that I tell them, like, I'm from Brazil, everybody asks me about, oh, and what about the trees, the lakes, the flowers, and the animals, and all this cool stuff that you guys have around. And actually, we have a lot of trees, lakes, and flowers, but it's not usual in the whole country. Like, I have never been in one of those scenarios. Actually, I came from Sao Paulo, and this is Sao Paulo. Pretty different. Actually, I have some cool stuff to tell you about Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is the largest city in the whole Americas, and it's amazing. And not just the, 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 the biggest, the largest city, it's actually the most popular city in the whole Southern Hemisphere. It's really huge. And actually, we have a lot of buildings. We have a lot of traffic. This is a usual picture of our Friday night. Yeah, you can, you can easily get stuck in one of those if you're in Sao Paulo on a Friday night. So yeah, there is no trees. There is no lakes. There is no animals. There is no this kind of thing where I live. But there is one thing that we are good and really good at. And it's fun. We in Brazil love to have fun. We love to party, we love to play, we love to go out with friends, we love to go to bars. We are really good at it. Like, we really love to get fun. And one of the most entertainment things that we do is soccer. Uh, you, you might know us by our famous players or by our famous teams and all the soccer stuff that's going on in Brazil. And actually, I'm not a big, big fan of, of, of soccer, but I like it. And two years ago, two years not, one year ago, I received the invitation to join a startup that was working with soccer in Brazil. This, this startup was called Palpitators. They were basically a soccer social network. And they asked me to join them as their CTO and prepare them to the World Cup. Well, soccer is huge in my country, so it would be a great opportunity to address big challenges and a wholly different context that I was not used to. So yeah, it took me a little while, but I decided to join them uh, a few months away from the World Cup. And we had a great marketing opportunity because one of our partners were Neymar, and you might know Neymar as a player of Barcelona. And we landed a deal with him that we could use his image for the next 10 years. So yeah, it was a great deal for us, and we are working pretty hard to make a marketing deal on top of it to the World Cup. So yeah, there are a lot of huge expectations. And when we start to talking about the World Cup, when we start to talk about this whole market thing and even landed a deal with a TV cable channel, I start to worry about performance. Like, okay, but will our application be ready to support this kind of thing? Like, I have just got in the company and you are talking about marketing stuff and how to bring a lot of users and make us a huge hit. But I'm not sure if our application can handle it. I'm not sure if you are prepared to extreme circumstances. And the thing about performance is like it's a nightmare to developers. You're sometimes thinking about it. You sometimes don't think about it. But once it becomes your reality, once it becomes true, it's really scary. So I start to Google around and see what I could find 
about stress testing, what I could found about loading tests that could help me to assure that my application was ready to this World Cup thing. And this, this is how I ended up knowing what is a stress test. And that's how we decided that we are going to use a stress test to ensure that our application is safe. So we made a little benchmark. We decided to start it pretty, pretty easy, just to know if you get it right. So we decided to make 15 requests in one minute. It's pretty, pretty low, like it's a regular application. We are talking about one request in never four seconds. And you don't have to be a genius to know how it turned out for us. Yeah, the results were really, really bad. Actually, what happened is, from the 15 requests, only three were successful. And the average load time was almost 10 seconds. Yeah, we are definitely not ready. And it's like, you may have already seen some numbers close to this. Or you may work on something that can become a... a so, so heavy like this. And actually, this was my face when I saw it. This was my face when I saw it. Like, I was really worried. I didn't know how to handle this. I wasn't prepared at all. We were just like a couple weeks from the World Cup. We already have landed these deals with these major companies. And we were not prepared. Like, if 15 people came up to our application in one minute, we are down. So how we are supposed to solve it? And when, this, when, when, you, when you see this kind of thing, like when you leave this kind of thing, you start to blame developers because it's the easiest way to do this. Like they're the closest people to this kind of problem. But actually, it's a problem that impacts everyone. It's related with marketing. It's related with design approach. It's related to business rules. So here I'm going to make a, a small break, a small pause on the story, because here is where the first key point pops up. And the first key point about stress testing as a culture is how to approach it. So once that you realize how performance and how stress test is important, how to approach stress test, how to start to thinking about it. And the best thing that, that I can tell you about how to approach stress test is you have to give the attention it deserves. If you are not in the same condition that I was, where you needed to solve it quickly, it's the best time for you to start to give it the attention it deserves. Because you have to treat performance as a critical matter. You have to, to treat developer as you treat design, as you treat development, and we, as you treat marketing. And you have to change the way you think. Because you have to make performance a priority so it can guide you in your decision-making process. So you're going to start to ask yourself, are you going to use the CMS? Are we, where are we going to, ho to host our website? Or should we download a team? So should we do a feature? And the best thing to set performance as a priority or to start to stress testing is to set goals. So you have to set up some goals to your stress testing and to your application, to your performance. And set up goals, it's define a performance and budget that you have to stick to it and compromise to it. So you have to set up a budget and you won't let anything that will decrease your budget, decrease your performance comes in. And if some feature comes in, some features that will not help you to achieve those, those goals or will take you away from those goals and from your performance budget, you have three options. The first option is you optimize another existing feature or asset that you have into your application. The second option is you remove an existing feature or asset from your application so you can stick into your goal. And the third, the third option, that is the most difficult one, you don't add a new feature at all because it will take you away from your goals and your performance and budget. 
And there is a, there is a couple of small things that might help you to set those performance goals. And the couple, the, I, I'll talk about them a little quickly. Like the first one is a simple golden rule. And this golden rule talking about 80 and 20. It say that 8% of the time that users spend into loading your application should be on front end and 20% should be on back end. If you start to use the simple rule, it will start to help you a little bit to set up some small goals to your initial stress testing. And another trick that might help you to set up those goals is a really buzzword that has been totally misunderstood. It's mobile first, what I would like to call performance first. Because the, there's one thing that people don't get about mobile first. Mobile first shouldn't be only about screen size. Mobile search should, should be about everything related to mobile, including network speed. It should be taken into account too, so, because it's deeply related with mobile. So yeah, that's another cool thing that you should bring to your application to help you to set up your initial goals and to start to approaching the stress test. Because mobile is exploding. Mobiles will focus you to will force you to focus and mobile will extend your capabilities. So, so, so you have a nice small idea of how you should be worried about how mobile network works and how to make your performance better. There are some numbers that I'm going to shade to show you. Uh, those are those numbers that people that doesn't that are online and the people that have smartphones. And the expectations is that two years from now, everybody that is online will have a smartphone. Everybody. And there's some other numbers. Like if you take a look at the closed curve at adoption of those technologies, the gray line is the adoption of internet, is how people that don't have internet are decreasing. And the blue line is that how people that doesn't have smartphones are decreasing. And the expectation is that by 2017, everybody that has internet will have a smartphone. Everybody. So there's a good company that start to approach stress testing and performance and use those hints that I gave you. This company was BBC. BBC defined that they would target a 10 seconds load at the GPRS connection. So they used exactly the hints that I gave to you. So they focused on mobile and they defined goals, goals that they should commit to. And we at our application on Paw Potatoes, when we decided to stress test, the first thing that I thought, yes, all right, I have to set up some goals. I have to commit to something that I'm looking forward to achieve. And my commitment was I will reduce our 10 seconds load to minus 500 milliseconds. That was my goal. It was a really rude goal for two weeks of work. But yeah. I said, we are going to do this, and we are not going to add any new feature that might compromise this goal. And this is the first thing that you, you have to do when thinking about stress tests. The first thing is you have to decide how to approach it. And the second thing, the second key point that I will show up today, it's there are different types of testing. You have different types of performance in tests. You have different types of stress tests. You have different types of load tests. There's a lot of different ways to do this, and there are different, different tests. But we decided that we would like to focus on stress testing. The difference between them is that performance in tests, they validate your speed, your stability as a tested application. The stress test, that is what we wanted, was determining how your application will behave in extreme conditions. And the load test is verify if your application performance is specifically under peak load conditions. So yeah, we decided that we would move on with stress testing. And in order to do stress test, 
you have two different ways to do this. You can do this as clients per second, or you can do this as maintain clients per load. And it's, it's a small difference that may apply to the type of, of application that you are building, the type of application that you are working on. So the clients per second is really simple. It's how many clients can go to your application, get out your application in every second. And the other one, the maintain client load, is how many clients can get in your application on top of each other and keep and send requests together. So yeah, depending on the application that you're working on, you have to choose one of those. And we choose the clients per second. That is what would make sense to us. And we define the goal too. Our goal is that we want to beat five requests per second. So we are talking about 300 requests per minute. That's way, way bigger than 15 requests per minute. That is how we started. So yeah, those are the first key points. So once that you realize that, that you need to worry about performance, or that performance issues might be happening into your application, you have to decide how to approach it. You have to define goals. And you have to decide what kind of stress testing are you going to, to do. And the third key point is what tools to use. And there is no straightforward answer here. Like, there are different tools for different kind of needs. So I will go through some of the most famous of them, and I will tell each one we choose it. But there's a lot of other solutions that may help you. The difference is about how to set it up, in what language it's writing, and how to, what type of reports you get from it. So there are some of them that are pretty much famous. You have a patch bench. It's huge because it's a patch. So yeah, it might be a great choice. You have JMeter that is writing Java, but it's a good solution. Uh, you have Sung, you have HTTP Perf, you have HTTP Load, and you have Trample that it's right and Ruby. So yeah, we have a lot of great solutions around. It's easy to find them. I can dive into each one, but the one that we chose was one that was developed by a great company. This company was SendGrid. SendGrid developed a solution to stress test and load test that's really cool, and it's called Loader I.O. I would totally recommend it to you if you are looking for something to stress test your app because it's pretty easy to set up and have great reports either. Uh, they describe Loader I.O. as a free loading test service to stress test your app apps and APIs with thousands of concurrent conditions. So, yeah, actually, you have some paid plans, but you can use the free one that will enable you to test 10,000 clients per test. And yeah, it's totally enough for you. It's totally enough for the most of applications, unless you are Google. <laughs> and well, they have lots of great interface that will enable you to set up it really quickly. So all you have to do is fill some forms, and you also have some great reports to watch. So yeah, it was definitely a great solution for us, and we decided that we were going to use it. And I would recommend it to you too. And this was the first point. So yeah, they're all pretty much simple until now. So you have to give performance priority. You have to set up some goals. You have to choose the right tool that you're going to use. And the four points is really, 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 really important. I think it's the most important point of all. It's about culture. Because culture is a, it's a tricky thing because no one can des really describe what a culture is. A lot of people may try to describe culture, but it's really hard to describe what culture is and how it, represents how it represents itself into your application, into your company. The best description that I have about culture is that something that can easily be spread. It's something that replicates itself inside the company. So it's like a DNA. That's the best description of culture that I have. And we, as developers, have a power to form new cultures, not only in communities, but also into our companies. We have this power to set up and create new cultures. And you already have done this before. We have done this before with TDD, with PDD, 
and anything that you can put here at DD. But yeah, so we already have done this before. We, we as developer have brought testing to company's culture. And we can do this again with stress tests. And I believe that is an easy way to do this if we want to. And the easiest way is by integrating it into our deployment process. So what we should do is integrate our stress testing within our Jenkins or any, 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 integra any integration process that we have into your deployment process. That's the bad way to create a new culture related to stress tests. And we can do this. We certainly can. This is the most important thing. But you must be, be thinking about how it ended up for us. Like, how was the World Cup for us? And I'm going to talk about it. So you might remember our results. It was only three, three successful response, and it had an average time response of 10 seconds. So we have done some pretty, pretty cool thing to solve it. Uh, I won't dive in because it, it's not the purpose of this talk, but I'm talking a little bit about what we did. The first thing that we did is that we created indexes. So every index that we're missing into our database structure. The second thing, we changed a lot of our database structure and relationships. So we, we just deleted every relationship that doesn't make any sense and created new ones that made sense for us. The third thing is we have factored tons of code. There's a lot of really bad code that you can find into any application. You can always rewrite it. So we focused on re rewrite code. The fourth thing is we put everything that we could as background jobs. It was really helpful. But the most important thing that we did was cache. But cache for real. And you have to do it right. Cache is a tricky thing. Actually, I became deeply interested in cache. And it was one of the most uh, helpful approach that we had. And after this, I will show to you how was our report. So this was our first report. Uh, as you can see, it may be a little bit small, but there is the true response with the 10 seconds low time. And after all these changes, only a week after this test, this was our chart. As you can see, here we have 299 requests. So only one request were lost. And they all took 627 milliseconds. So we almost, almost get our goal. You can see they close here. So yeah, it was amazing, like, we solved it, and we solved it so quickly, like, we dive in into code, we made the stress test automatically to run every time that we wrote a new code, we integrated it as our deployment process, and it was working. But well, the World Cup had arrived, and there was the first day, the first game, the most amazing thing. Everybody was super excited, not only about the World Cup, but about our application. And the first thing that happened after the game is our application went down. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, our application went down, and there's a lot of reasons about it. Even we're working pretty hard, and we have done everything that I told you we weren't able to make it. And the reason is that we concerned about it too late. So what I'm trying to do here is alert you, is tell you that you must worry about performance issues right now before you really need it, before you end up in the situation that I did. And you won't have enough time to work on it. Performance in tasks is crucial to scale an application. There's a lot of people going crazy about startups right now. So you have a lot of people throwing money at startups. We have a lot of people starting new business. 
then everybody are seeking a huge APO with a lot of users using it. But the thing is that even with all the money on Earth and the best people around, scale and performance, performance might keep you from scale. So it might really, really cause the failure of your business and the failure of your application. You must start to address it, it now. So I have just a few more slides. I will do a, quickly, a quickly wrap up. So if you go out from here and you don't remember my name, what I do, and some of the things that I said, there are some things that you have to keep in mind. The first thing is this. You have to set goals and you have to stick to it. So set up some performance goals. Set up some stress goals to your application that you are going to commit to. The second one, there are different types of tests, each one depending on the type of your application. So define what kind of test do you need, what kind of test your application needs. The third thing is choose a tool. It doesn't have right and wrong about tool stuff. There is no straightforward answer. You just have to choose the tool that will enable you to start to stress testing as fast as possible and that will give you the best reports that you might need. And the fourth and the most important one is make it a culture. You start to make it a culture now. Maybe in the next RubyCon one year from now, uh, I will see a lot of people saying that, hey, we are stressing testing as a culture. Stress test is part of our deployment process, and maybe there is some other talk about stress testing here. So yeah, this is a little quickly wrap up. Uh, I just have to say some thanks about some a lot of great people and great companies that made able me to be here. So first, I'd like to talk a little bit fast about open source. After all this stress testing thing and all my experience, I end up really involved with cash and with some open source projects. And right now, I'm really deeply involved with Active Model Serializer from Rails API. And we are really working hard to make the new version, the 1.00 version. So we are looking for as most as contributors that can help us. Uh, there's a lot of pull requests and a lot of issues open. We are trying to make the most we can by ourselves, but it's always good to have different people currently building with us into this. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk is that, I, as I said, I leave the Bob Potatoes and started my own company called Gioco, that is a SaaS platform for gamification. So if you want some stickers or want to hear a little bit more about it, just look for me. I'll be glad to give you stickers. Also, we have just released our Hiroko integration. So we are the first gamification add-on that you can find. So if you want to use us, we are on beta, so it's for free. Make yourself comfortable. And also, you can find some things that I have been writing the last few years at SitePoint, at old Rubsters, now known as SitePoint. There's a lot of blog posts that I wrote there. And this is it, people. Thank you.